Hello Traders, Gary Wagner here. Just about 11.15 in Honolulu, 4.15 in New York. It is Thursday, January 26th, 2017, and this is the Daily Report for Gold and Silver. We have lower pricing across the board in the precious metals markets. This now for the third consecutive day. Obviously, if the market closes uh, at this price point tomorrow or lower, even a little bit higher, we will have the first week in the last five weeks in which we have seen this market not close to a consecutive higher high and a higher low with a net gain on the week. So without a question of a doubt, recent activity has certainly indicated that the rally, which was at hand, which took the market from 1223, 1123 to 1223, at least for the most part is over. On today's show, I'm going to talk to you about different levels of support as well as resistance and our game plan for the next week. First, let's take a look at pricing. Gold closing lower, as I said, off by about $10, $9.90. This one, we look at uh, February gold at 1187.90. The low on the day has been 1183 and change with a high of 1202. So it did attempt to kind of pop to 1200 uh, and had no ability to, to sustain that move. Uh, April gold, which is the contract month that we'll look to trade in on our next trade is at 1190.60. A net change, of course, is going to be the same. We're basically seeing a drawdown of about eight tenths of a percent. When we look at silver, silver is selling off with a greater percentage drawdown today than gold off about 1.1% in terms of net losses, losing about 19 cents per ounce, trading currently at 1679. Uh, the low on the day is 1668 with a high of 1705. Of course, we are exited all of our long positions yesterday although some of our traders took our advice the day before when we recommended uh just covering those positions and the fact was we did see some weakness entering the market itself so traders absolutely no doubt an interesting day as we witness gold trading lower for now the third consecutive day it's really the first time we've seen uh, consecutively lower prices for three days in a row since the uh, onset of the rally which of course occurred at the end of last year uh, beginning of this year taking the market from roughly 12.23 to about excuse me 11.23 to about 12.23 now the interesting thing as i look at this rally now that i can look at it in a rear view mirror so to speak in other words i absolutely see that the rally that existed is now in somewhat of a corrective mode even if it uh, find support in this particular area but on a typical rally in gold a moderate rally is about a hundred dollars a very very strong rally in gold is definitely a hundred and forty hundred and sixty all the way up to maybe 190 with about 160 being about the norm for a very very strong rally that being said we've had on this first leg a pretty moderate rally and now it's time to really look for where we think a and or conclusion to this correction uh, could come in. Now, we talked about various price levels. 11.83, that's our 38% retracement of the rally. A 61.8% re, uh, retracement, which comes in at 11.61. And the deepest of acceptable retracements to maintain a bullish model, meaning that we're looking for a rally a correction, but the correction being much less than the rally, and then a rally to follow that. I think it will be most interesting to see how this recent correction unfolds and whether or not the current low that we saw achieved today at 1183, which of course is a 38% retracement of the most recent rally, if this particular low holds or if we break below it. Because a break 
below this particular price point at 1183 would really indicate the potential for gold prices to go as low as 1161 which would be a standard deep correction with a 61.8 percent retracement we are currently flat with no active trades in either gold or silver and i expect that we will go into the weekend flat as well and look at where pricing is at the beginning of next week. In other markets that we follow, the Dow Jones Industrial Average had a marginal gain today, fractional at best, 0.16%, so about a little bit over a tenth of a percent, a 32-point gain, but the key is, is that it closed above 20,000 uh, for the second consecutive day in a row, 20,100, as I said, a net gain of about 32 points. Mixed bag in the other indices with the standard and pours closing fractionally lower on the day, as you can see, 2296, but still in record territory for a new weekly high on the week. And NASDAQ uh, closed fractionally higher to, in essence, unchanged, which is what we're seeing right now. Of interest, of course, is going to be the dollar index because the dollar index definitely contributed to today's weakness in precious metals pricing. Although what we see when we break it apart, and this according to the Kitco Gold Index, roughly half of the losses seen today were attributable to dollar strength and the other half attributable to selling within the marketplace. A dollar back above 100 at 153, up a half a percent on the day. The low has been 99.79 and the high 173. And then lastly, we did have a pretty sizable move in crude oil today, uh, moving up almost 2% on the day a dollar gain per barrel to close at 53.76. There is no doubt the investment community globally has had their eyes on U.S. equities as they move to new record highs. The Dow Jones Industrial Average now for the second day in a row has traded and closed above 20,000. Absolutely impressive, but I do have to uh, put some caution into these recent moves and I draw your attention to this daily candlestick chart. Here's our week's activity that we have seen. And the one thing that's quite evident is that we do have a price void or a price gap, which occurred roughly two days ago. And it is the fact that it has never traded in between this particular price point or range. It's a true gap in which it gapped above the former highs. And so typically on a gap like this, on a technical model, we look for at some point that gap to go and get filled before moving to higher ground. The second thing is that these gains that we have seen today are not extremely strong. It's not the kind of follow through that traders would like to see on this kind of a market, which is sitting at all time record highs. And traders, the dollar's activity has been extremely interesting of recent. We're looking at a standard bar chart. This in weekly format, we can certainly see that now for the third consecutive week, we've got red bars, which means that it is closing lower than the open. And we've seen lower highs for the last three weeks, as well as lower lows for the last three weeks. Traders, we did recommend that you cover all long positions yesterday. We did allude to that a couple of days before, but regardless of whether you got out yesterday or a few days ago, you got out with profits on the trade. On today's video report, we talked about key levels that we certainly want to look at. And my sense is that this current uh, sell-off witness uh, today, as well as this week as a whole, will be short-lived. I would look for it to not last very long and we have specific targets that we are looking at. I believe that once this correction actually concludes, we will have another leg of the most recent rally. And realize the recent rally was about a $100 move. A third wave rally should take us far beyond that, anywhere between $120 and $160. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you, as always, good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for the weekly wrap-up and review.